we're back. So, did you get this right? Did 10 minutes do for you? Was that enough time? If you're smart, well, you probably got it done by before 10 minutes elapsed. So, we're gonna look at the Tesla business model now and see what elements did you get right and it'll be a good self-check for yourselves as well. And then I'm going to ask you a few questions about the insights you may get from looking at their business model. Let's start. So Tesla sells those electrical sportive cars to people that could afford them, and they lock them through an emotional relationship. They get them to fall in love with gallons of light and things like that that we heard over in the clip. And then they decided to sell those cars, like everybody else does in the industry, but through a different channel. TeslaMotors.com and the shopping mall flagship stores of Tesla, which is way different than when the industry decided. So one clue that we have here, or signal, is that Tesla is not just about disruption in the technology space or the value space, but also in the business model space. Tesla, once the cars were bought, delivers another value proposition called free charge through another channel, the free charging solar station network of theirs. So we could see that this part of the model is somewhat or really different from the auto industry. What about the other part? So Tesla uses smart engineers and very talented ones, human resource, right? And they use their brand, intellectual resource. So whoever wrote down a brand is a value proposition or a walk, mm -mm. a brand is a key resource and you pay good money to buy a brand. What the brand brings to a customer is the value itself. And it could be a sense of life, like in the Coca-Cola brand, or other stuff. Tesla has their own manufacturing facilities. So, so their plants are a physical resource. And, oh, here's a familiar guy here. Their network of solar charging stations is a key resource they own, a physical resource. So here's a point where we see a resource playing both parts as a channel and a resource as well. Good. What do they do? So they manufacture, they develop, design, and innovate, and they distribute, sell, and market. So they do everything. And their partners, their key partners, are Toyota, Mercedes-Benz, and Panasonic for the sake of batteries or battery packs and so forth. And their main costs, manufacturing and marketing distributing, right? But that's not the end of the story. Tesla has another value chain in its business model. It's B2B chain. So other automakers, specifically those guys, are being locked into a corporation-based, joint venture basis kind of a locking relationship. Here's another kind of a tip for you. Whenever you hear the word or use the word joint, whether joint development, joint analysis, joint venture, or whatever, it's a lock. And it works really well because both yourself, your customer, or your partner are contributing essence and value into this model. They also sell electrical powertrains to those other automakers and they use a B2B sales force, a different channel for a different value. And of course, the sales of those electrical powertrains. My question to you would be, look at the entire model from a canvas perspective and tell me if you get any insights about Tesla business model. I'm gonna come back in 30 seconds and maybe we'll have the same answer.
So do you have an answer for me? What are the insights on the Tesla business model? So if you're a business designer and you're looking at the canvas from a pattern perspective, remember patterns? We saw those in, at Southwest case. So here's two things interesting. They use key partners as customers. We did see that earlier in the game in the Southwest example. And here's another interesting fact. Tesla chose to have this block in their model entirely owned by them, which is totally different from what the industry does, the rest of the automakers in this case. And another twist, they offer the same free charge to drivers of other automakers as well. And that's another kind of an insight, a same kind of pattern that we saw earlier, like in the Southwest case. They grab other people's or their customer's customer by offering them a value proposition and they lock their customer, the other automakers, in this case. So Tesla, whether you think they're successful or not, whether you have a judgment on them or not, observe their business model and try to see how their behavior is looking. All right, so we've had this exercise for now. And there's one more fact that's really important for your thinking that I'd like to share with you about Tesla. Let's read what it says here. In March 2016, Tesla claims the pre-order of Model 3 stands at 325,000 cars in one week. The one fact you need to know is that in March 2016, there was no car. What does that tell us? What does that tell us about validation of ideas? What does that tell us about the testing of value propositions? Putting them in the face of reality and seeing if they work or not. If you were Tesla, would you manufacture the car first and then launch it in the market, ideate and launch? Or would you design and test? So crowdfunding is definitely one of those elements in which you validate and test value propositions.